Today's episode of Random Land took one heck of a left turn and turned into a fright by the end of the night. I thought we were just going to talk about some cool antiques I got while I was in New England, go check up on the antique store booth, you know, do a little restocking, a little hanging out, and then all of a sudden, clowns, monsters, fog, darkness. It's all coming up right now. There's quite a bit of clutter in my house right now. As you can see, our traveling and kind of last minute packing and leaving and packing and leaving has taken its toll as well as Allie's Halloween parties, the Oceanic Arts Auction, and all of this stuff piled up around here. You may be thinking, what is this stuff? I know I'm always thinking, what is this stuff? A lot of what you're seeing are pieces of of projects that happen, like Chucky over there, or a pile of DVDs for a bad movie night. A big part of all of this is stuff that we have piled up for sale at the antique store booth that I just haven't had time to price or take. Lots of weird stuff that we're not exactly sure how to display in there, so it just backs up. It just backs up in piles. Matter of fact, we even got a few little knickknacks to put in the booth from New Hampshire and New England when we were out there. And luckily, Ali started going through that pile last night and putting prices on it. So the mission today has got to be going down there and getting some of this stuff into the booth and out of my house. So let's adjourn to the Random Land HQ and I'll show you some of the stuff we grabbed. <sighs> Step back here to the area we shipped the merch from. Whoa. Oh. Oh. Jeez. Oh. Gosh. Ugh. There really is stuff everywhere in here. Whew. Ah. Can't move for stuff all over this place. And that is exactly why it's important to show you guys what's going on so I can get it out of here and go get it into the antique store and out of the house where it doesn't belong. So I'll show you a couple of things we picked up over in New England. This is one of the things right here, Nathaniel Hawthorne's House of the Seven Gables. But this is for me, I've been reading this because the Seven Gables is an actual real house and this is an old 1800s novel about a real old house that's been around from the 1600s in Salem, Massachusetts. So of course we were in Salem, Massachusetts and then we were in some little antique store and I saw, you know, an actual copy of the book. I was like, well, we gotta get that. And I gotta read the copy that came from New England about New England, because I'm weird like that. But we also picked up some other stuff. Actually, last year, when we were driving through Maine and New Hampshire, we stopped at this like little old lady's house. It looks like a Pippi Long stocking house, but all restored and all nice, like a cute old New England house with the little turrets, like Queen Anne architecture. And there's a little shed outside, uh, outside, outside, where this lady sells her artwork. Her name is Anna Igo, I think. And this is one of the few pieces we could get because it's one of the few pieces we could bring home. Look at this, five little pumpkins right there. Look at those little adorable pumpkins all on this little hand painted sign. So she paints all this kind of cool stuff. This is like a coat hanger right here on the top as a wire for hanging it. So, you know, Allie fell in love with that right away. And she's like, oh, we can put that in the booth or something. Just do something nice, support the, the little old lady selling stuff by the side of the road. And I think there were actually some antiques there as well. So there's a pile of stuff here. I'm just gonna pull it up one at a time. It's a little awkward, a little off the cuff, a little unedited for you. We also found a couple of these, a couple of chocolate boxes, which are pretty cool because I've never seen these brands of chocolate boxes. They're obviously old, right? Because there's these old cardboard boxes. I don't need to open it, they're just empty boxes. But there's this like cool paper wrapping on the top cover with this like really cool old artwork on it. Like look at this, look at this old mansion on the side. I don't know if you can see that there. But these are pretty cool and you know, there's just something we could sell for 10 bucks or whatever. And it's kind of interesting because people who collect old packaging and stuff um, who live in California, you wouldn't be able to get this in California because it's a brand they didn't sell here. I've never seen the package out here. There's another one right here. Let me pull this one up for you. Look at that. That is awesome. And there's like a lot of texture to this paper right here, like a texture on top, which is kind of neat. It's like, it's like old wrapping paper, like from the 50s. So I know this is pretty old. What does this say? Lady Betty Chocolates. A delightful assortment. <laughs> Chocolate covered nuts. That's not my favorite thing, you know, but it's a really cool box and a really cool piece. It's something that's not gonna be expensive or anything. Ooh, and then there's this. Look at this, this is pretty small. So I don't know if you can get like a, a really good look at that. That's a Minnie Mouse spoon. A Minnie Mouse spoon. And speaking of old spoons, see, Ali already got the tags on there, so sorry that there's a, a little bit of a tag in the way. Speaking of old spoons, this is gonna be really hard to see. Uh, we found something I have never seen before, and they always say like the time to buy it's you know when you've never seen it before when when you see it 
Uh, these spoons right here, there's two of them, a little matching set. These are SpaghettiOs spoons. I never knew, but there's like a little SpaghettiO character on here, like little eyeballs and like this guy's sticking out his tongue and it says, oh, oh, SpaghettiO, which is weird because maybe this is Mandela effect, but I always thought it was, uh oh, SpaghettiO. Is it not, uh oh, SpaghettiO? Because it says, oh, oh, SpaghettiO on here. Oh, oh, SpaghettiO. And they are metal spoons. So like, when would you have bought this? With a can of SpaghettiOs? Would this have been in the grocery store? Would this have been a, a mail away promotion? I'm really interested. I want to do a bunch of research. And this is exactly the kind of thing I would normally like put over here. I'd put back here somewhere. And I wouldn't look at for years to come and go, oh, I got to do those research on that. But and being held, my feet are being held to the fire on a quick turnaround on this stuff and getting it into the booth. So, you know, the, each one of these things is sold for like four bucks over what we got it for. Just, just so that we'd have the fun of antiquing with Ali out in New England. We could bring some cool New England stuff and some stuff I've never seen before, like the SpaghettiO spoons to California, uh, where maybe, you know, someone else who hasn't ever gotten a chance to see one. But I just thought that was so cute. I can't eat SpaghettiOs anymore because I have celiac disease and they are made of gluten, so I can't eat SpaghettiOs, but if I could, I would keep those spoons for sure and eat uh, and eat with them. Speaking of things you can't get out here, this is the perfect example. Right here, we've got an old milk bottle. Believe it or not, this thing that you're looking at right here is a milk bottle, and it's got a weird plastic, or not plastic, like a cardboard top. There's a metal ring right here and there's this cardboard top that has like artwork on it, which is exactly how pogs were invented. They were the old milk top lids and you could pop out the cardboard circle out of the ring. So this is like really old. I don't know how old, um, but it's from a, from a local dairy out there where we were staying in Holderness, New Hampshire. So it's kind of neat. And it even has like the old phone number on it. It's, I think it says, Oh, it doesn't, it's not the same on both sides. Hold on, let me turn that around for you. Cause this says like maple, what does it say? Maple syrup, fresh eggs, pasteurized milk and cream, Burley Farm Associates, Holderness, New Hampshire. But you know, look at the phone number on there. It says, what does it say? Ashland 1342. That's how you know something's old. So you've never seen one of these in your life if you've lived in Southern California. And uh, maybe these are common all over New England, but I doubt they're still common because they are just kind of waxy coated cardboard. This would clean up really nice, but I don't want to do that. I'll leave that up to the person who might want it to look old. They might want to clean it up a little bit, but this is really cool. By the way, sorry for any of the cat hair floating around here. We were gone for two weeks in New England and I'm afraid for whatever reason, the cats decided that this was gonna become their headquarters. Maybe they were gonna do like the Patreon podcast for me or something, I don't know. But they just camped out in here. So everything I touch in here, it's like a little cloud of speckles and sparkles. It's like twilight in here every time. Then we found this, which is like a little, you could put a pot on there. There's older ones shaped like irons, right? They're like, uh, there's a metal. I don't know if this is brass or, must be brass or something like that. And you put, you can put a pot on it, you know, like a hot pot on your counter so it doesn't ruin your counter. Or you can uh, put an iron on it. That was what the old ones were for. They're shaped like in an iron shape. And then you would put, like, like an iron, like for ironing your clothes and you would put it down on there, you know, so you wouldn't burn your bed or wherever you're doing your ironing. And this is pretty cool because you can put a pot on it. Now. It's just like, it's just a little knickknack. Not expensive, just like a cool little thing. And again, it came from New England. It's got a little snowflake pattern on it. Speaking of New England specific things, there's this, this really cool like pie tin right here. And I don't know, it might be kind of hard to read. Let me see if I can get it there on the other camera. But it says New England flaky crust pie, uh, five cents, table talk. So I don't know if table talk was the brand, but I love that it says New England flaky crust pie or New England table talk flaky crust pie. It's probably what I said, because it's New England table talk flaky crust pie. Again, I can't eat a lot of pie, gluten, but uh, we thought this was really interesting and Allie thought that was really cute. And she loves New England. She was always looking for little things that say New England. And we're just thinking about people back home. Like, oh, you're, in, you're shopping, you see like a pie tin. Like I have a pie tin here from, let me see if I can grab it. From Knott's Berry Farm. Really early one when it was uh, Knott's Berry Place. I don't know if you can see in there, Knott's Berry Place stamped in there before it was Knott's Berry Farm. So it's an old pie tin and you can find stuff like this from local places, chicken pie shop and things like that in Southern California. But you're not gonna find any New England table talk uh, pie tins out here. So we thought that'd be kind of a neat thing to bring home for the folks. And then if we're gonna get really specifically New Hampshire, found a couple of New Hampshire license plates. It's funny cause out there, 
they were you could see the expensive license plates, like the ones that they were charging 30 bucks for or whatever. You could see the expensive ones were all from California, Hawaii, and Alaska, like the places the farthest from New England, because the plates aren't as common. And people collect license plates. They put them up in their, their man cave or their woman cave or whatever, and uh, or the garage, or maybe on old cars if you got a matching set. And so I thought, oh, I'll grab a couple of New Hampshire plates because uh, it's the same thing in California. If you're collecting license plates in California, you're not gonna find New Hampshire, Maine, Vermont, or whatever. And so that was kind of a neat thing I thought to bring back. And then amongst that pile was this. I don't know the backstory behind this. I assume, let's see, because what does it say? Long may it wave, God bless America, a little license plate thing. This is like for the front of your car. And I was thinking at first, like, oh, it must be bicentennial because there was so much stuff like this around in 1976 for the bicentennial, but the size is wrong. It's a little earlier. And uh, this could be even going back as far as World War II. Although I doubt they'd be wasting metal like this in World War II, so maybe post-war. Or it could be from 76 from the Bicentennial. I don't know. I have not been able to find a picture of an exact one of these. So we take our best guess. It's a little more expensive than those plates. So we put that in the antique store booth for, you know, a couple of bones and then uh, see, if I see, see what happens with it. I thought it was cool. I wanted to put it on the front of my Mustang and then I forgot I removed the whole license plate bracket um, from the front of the light, from the Mustang because it's pointy and it doesn't look right having the license. So I took it off and I get tickets. Not all the time, I would say once every other year, but I've got two tickets this year. And so the, sec the, new, the new tickets wasn't cheap. So now I gotta sell this license plate to pay for the fact that I don't have a license plate on the front of my car. So I was thinking the front of the car, but it won't go on there. And I got Back to the Future 2, future 2015 license plate on the front of the van. So it can't go on the front of the van. So it's just going, it's going to someone else, a good home. Oh, I think this is, no, not last. Hold on, there's some other stuff here. I also found this. Now, this is a common thing. Check this out over here. This is a pencil case. It's kind of shiny on there. But a little pencil case right here. A.W. Faber. What's that say? Castell. Ooh, and there's like a little, a little old-timey picture right here. What is it? It is a, I feel like, uh, I feel like Raymond Castile. There's a great channel called Raymond Castile's Basement of Horror. He goes down in his basement and he does something like this and he just shows stuff. And I'm working on some ideas like this, but uh, he always pulls out a magnifying glass so he can see little details. And now I understand why. But there's a little old timey picture of a joust on here, like a little medieval picture on the Castell pencil case. Pencil cases are common, but this is clearly from the East Coast. Check this out. There were pencils inside it. When I opened it up, there's all these really neat old graphics. A.W. Faber, let me read this. All who require a genuine A.W. Faber pencil should pay particular attention to the initials A.W., which happen to be Allie Warren's initials, right? Allie's initials. But look at all the little pencils. Someone had sharpened their pencils in here. They got some 5-H pencils, and they got some vintage pencils inside, and I just thought it was so neat that, like, this had made it from wherever someone had found this in a barn or a drawer or something like that. Oh, there is an actual one A.W. Faber pencil in here. I just found it right here. I don't know if you can read that. That's some tiny writing. It's a Castell pencil. So this is probably one of the original pencils that was in here. And I love that. And there's some unsharpened ones. And so I just thought that was kind of a neat little thing. I mean, you know, what do these things cost? Uh, but it's just neat that it has all the old pencils inside of there. So, you know, 10 bucks or something, you get yourself these little old pencils. I like old, when I'm doing like woodworking, I like really old chisels. I like old saws. I have some of my great grandfather's tools and I have actually a draw knife, which is like a sharp thing you actually pull towards yourself, sort of plain off wood. Um, that was his dad's. So my great, great grandfather's and I love the idea of sharpening and using old tools. So, so I know for people who draw and even for me having cool, old, I might take one of those vintage pencils out of there. And use that for, for, if this doesn't sell in the booth, I'm going to go back and just yeah, keep it for me. Um, and then last but not least is the first thing that I was like, okay, we're buying this. And I don't care if we have to ship it home in a box. And we did ship it home in a box thanks to our friend Kevin over at the Partridge in a Bear Tree, which we showed his shop in some of the videos from New England. <laughs> last but not least is this. <laughs> now, do you know what this is? I'm sure some of you don't know what this is. But as soon as I saw it, I immediately knew what it was. This right here is an old timey bee smoker. Okay. The first time I ever saw one of these, 
I think was at The Thing, that classic roadside attraction in Arizona, like right near the New Mexico border. The Thing, what is it? And when you went into the old thing, which I have a video of on uh, uh, somewhere, of the original thing, you would walk into all these outbuildings that had the most random old antiques. And I could never find it again when I went back to film the place, but I have this vivid memory of on tour, and maybe I'm mixing it up with another roadside attraction, but I have this vivid memory of going in there and there being a th one of these, just like this, and well, a little bit different, but very similar, same style and everything. And it said, be smoker. It was really the thing for smoking bees or whatever. And I was like, bee smoker? So of course, I'm thinking, you you smoke bees? What do you put the bees in? You, you smoke the bees? No, you don't smoke the bees. You smoke the bees by putting a little bit of burning stuff in here. You put some, you know, guys in there, your newspaper or whatever, uh, sticks and stuff and cotton. I don't know what they would put in there, to be honest with you. And get a little fire going in this thing. So this should pop off to do that. There you go. You get a little fire going in here. Ooh, that's, that's crusty and rusty. And so there's like a little grate at the bottom to catch the ash. There's a little grate down here. And you put your burning stuff in there, right? Close this. There's the oxygen in holes. And then this is the smoke spout. And then this is like a bellows. So this is leather. You squeeze this and it's really fragile because it's so old and you know, I don't want to split it. So I'm just showing you just enough to show you that it still squeezes. And this is like a piece of wood right here. And it's like old, really old rivet. So this is an old one and it would shoot smoke out of here and you literally put smoke all over the beehive and that's supposed to calm the bees down so you can get in there and grab the honeycomb and clean off the bees by hand or whatever. And supposedly that gets them calm so they don't sting you or whatever. Um, people will use them also spray, spray this on um, like as a pesticide almost, like a pest deterrent. Like you could spray it on bushes and it's supposed to chase the mosquitoes away that are living in your bushes or whatever. I don't, I've never seen anyone use it for that because I didn't live in the 1940s or whatever before you know, all the chemical companies gave us sprays. They're probably a lot worse than spraying things with smoke. But I think beekeepers still use this. I watched this channel, 628 Dirt Rooster, where hobby beekeeping is a way of a life. And if you ever have a chance to look up 628 Dirt Rooster, I highly recommend it. I know there's like a viral lady since that came after him who's on TikTok and it's like, we're gonna save the bees. You ever heard that lady? She's neat, but 628 Dirt Rooster, old school. He's been doing it for a long time. He's got all these like videos on his channel where he removes beehives and stuff. And the whole shtick is that he saves the bees and he'll take them and he'll, he has his own honey that he makes in his own bee farm area, or he'll repatriate the bees to other places or whatever, remove them and let them go somewhere safer. But he's done all kinds of like, uh, uh, bee removals where he's like getting out bumblebee infestations and stuff out of people's chimneys or like they're sawing apart the whole floor to get bees out. And he's just like grabbing them by hand. They're stinging them all crazy. And he's like, He's cool. I could, I got obsessed with those videos like a while back and I would watch them pretty religiously. It's been a while, but uh, 628 Dirt Rooster would appreciate this. It's an old bee smoker. And I've seen him use, a, use some different techniques for, for calming the bees. So I would assume if you're an apiarist, is that the right word? Pretty sure it is. And you are a beekeeper of some kind, you might, uh, you might like this is a bee smoker. So it's really old. And that's the thing. Everything in New England is a lot older than in California. If you saw one of these in California, it'd probably be from the 50s. It'd probably be more modern. It'd be really hard to find something that was clearly built at the turn of the last century, maybe even earlier. And uh, just judging by the nails, you, if you're judging by the little rivets and the nails and stuff, that usually gives it away. And the, the one screw on here, it's a flathead screw. It's older. Um, let's see, manufactured by the AI Root Company, Root Quality B Supplies. Look at that, I didn't even notice that writing on there. At any point in New Hampshire or, or since I got back, you can see there used to be a strap here so you could like almost accordion it. That's what it says, it says Root Quality. So who knows when they made that. There's a little stamp on there. This, the, the font looks a little more modern than I was expecting. So maybe turn of the century, maybe 1920s even. They were still making, I mean, think about Model Ts. They were still making them out of wood and leather. And you ever sit in a Model T from the 20s? It's like just sitting on a piece of plywood mounted on top of wheels and an engine. It's kind of freaky. So uh, and I've never gotten to drive a Model T or really go for a long ride in a Model T. So if anyone out there's got a Model T, let's do a ride along. Let's do an on location or something. We gotta, I gotta get my Model T fixed. I wanted to do it at the Henry Ford and they were sold out for the day. There was too long of a line. I gotta go and get my, 
I gotta go and get my uh, model teeing on. But for now, I'm gonna go and smoke all the bees I need to smoke, and then head on down to the antique store. Let's go see what else is down there. I haven't been down there in weeks and weeks and weeks. My mom's been setting stuff up in there, so we'll see what kind of, see what's in stock, see what's going on, and see if there's any room to add this stuff without her knowing. Let's go. All right, let's just see uh, if this thing will start. Oh, it lives. Look at this, this is what I'm talking about. Even the van has got piles. Look at these old vintage Star Wars action figures in here, tons of them. And speaking of Star Wars, I got the big Millennium Falcon. This is the Disneyland edition, the uh, the Galaxy's Edge. It's just a little yellowed, but uh, and not complete, but it still has most of the parts and everything like that. And the parts are like, you know, worth a lot. But the thing is so big, we haven't had room in the booth. And speaking of big, I got this huge chair. Maybe it's better if we just ignore the chair. It's a long story of how I got... I thought I was buying a crafts, cool like craftsman chair and I was gonna give it to my dad and maybe refinish it, get a new cushion, and it turned out it wasn't craftsman-y at all. Uh, so, yeah, I got this chair. It's a big old mid-century chair. It's just not the right, you know, it might be like kind of more of a 40s chair, sometime between the 40s and the 60s. And the cushion maybe, who knows, 50s to 70s. Anyway, let's ignore the chair. All right, it's a mess, bros. It's a mess. Not just the house, but the car. Got lots of ticking noises. The windshield wipers still don't work. Gotta find myself an auto electrician. One of the things on my very long to-do list. Honestly, for as rusty and crusty and clicky as this van is right now, it's the only car I have with no check engine light on it. Figure that out. So even though I can't do any long road trips in this thing, not until I find a a reliable mechanic that's local, at least. Uh, for hauling stuff around back and forth to the antique store and local trips, it's, you know, it's been holding together. You hear me, baby? Hold together. Anyway, that's enough yakking about cars for me. That's enough shop talk. Time to head down to the orange circle again. Let's go. I do miss living down here, but the prices have just gotten insane. Not to mention the neighborhood has changed quite a bit in the last couple of years. Chapman University back there has just kept growing and growing and growing. And so more and more the quaint little shops of the Orange Circle have become gentrified, become more and more like uh, Chapman's Food Court, this little hipster stores, which is, I mean, good overall for the neighborhood. But it's definitely been changing and changing, getting a little pricier to live down here. There are still a few little old school spots like Mr. C's Records over there and the antique shops that we're about to go in. And luckily, thankfully, there's still a lot of that old school small town charm over here, even though we're surrounded by millions and millions of people in the LA slash Orange County area. It's one of the biggest megalopolises in the country. There's something quaint here, something almost Midwestern, something old school, something lost from a lot of towns in Orange County, especially. Oh, look at this, the fountain is still Heimbucked and covered with this green fencing because a car smacked into it. Still not repaired, dang. Anyway, I still love it over here. If I won the lottery, you'd know because I'd be buying a house in Orange right away. But at least, luckily, we still have our antique store booth down here. So although we don't live in Orange anymore, we're still part of the neighborhood. You know, it's funny because wherever else I am in the entire rest of the country, when I tell people I'm from California, they're like, whoa, isn't it like crazy expensive and awful there? I'm like, well, it's not awful here, but it is crazy expensive. I've thought a lot about leaving like many other people have done before me. You know what? I'm here for at least another couple of years my son's not quite 18 yet. Trust me, if I can manage it, if I can cling on by the skin of my teeth, fingernails, and toenails, I'll stay in California. They're just not making it any easier at all. And that's not just about me. I know a lot of people, a lot of small vendors, a lot of small mom and pop businesses are having a really hard time down here. It's been slow everywhere. Everybody's feeling the pinch. Which is why we really gotta keep this thing stocked up. Look at this. Man, it looks great in here. Oh, dude, this is awesome. I haven't been down here for weeks and weeks. My mom has sort of uh, taken over the everyday operations, coming down here, keeping stuff in stock, keeping things organized. She's done a heck of a lot of work down here because it looks awesome. And of course, we got the big fun pig here. Come down and take a fun pig with me. There's a bunch of stuff that I know has been waiting to come in here that it's like, oh, finally, it's in here. This is all, this is all different. It's all been reorganized. We got a bunch of posters over here. Oh, vintage glasses. We got old school children's books. We got a lot of Star Wars toys in here. And more. Lots of cool 80s toys now. Look at that Playmobil. You got the Shadow board game. Remember the, remember the Shadow? Look at all this stuff. Oh, dude, that's awesome. Look at that. 
Roger Rabbit Starlog magazine. I almost want to buy this. And I remember, wait, I'm trying to sell it. There's a lot of old school vintage Starlogs back here. Really good ones. Man, look at the display case, man. Look at all the vintage Disney stuff. Look at that. Mark Twain paperweight. You got Mickey Mouse coffee. Look at that old school Donald right there. So many neat little knickknacks and paddywhacks. <gasps> Robin Hood? Who put that in there? I want that Robin Hood. And, of course... A giant, very rare Frankenstein head. A pricey item, but it was pricey to make. Oh gosh, we got action figures in here. We got postcards. We got old vintage magazines and brochures and paperwork here for all kinds of Disney parks and roadside attractions. Look at that. Old road maps, old Texaco road maps. Happy to see that the sticker machine has been restocked. There's a couple stickers in there. That aren't on the outside now. Oh, we got a basket of old vintage Mickey. Oh, there's extra posters and prints back there. We got park maps. See, that's the cutest thing ever. I don't know where my mom found that. That definitely isn't one of mine. That's awesome. Look at, the size. Look at this grizzly bear. Dude, that thing is awesome. 24 bucks? That's a steal. There's a few little random land treats in here. You can only get that giant sticker at the orange circle. We got a few old school magnets. We got this, this guy. Hey, a couple of uh, old timey. Random Land shirts. There's a Disneyland shirt there. We got a Randy the Random Land rat shirt. Speaking of which, I haven't seen that rat for a while. Starting to get suspicious. Maybe we've seen the last of him forever. Look at these vintage Halloween toothpick holders, quote unquote. Look at those shot glasses. Those are cool. Whoa! I know you couldn't see, but I almost knocked over the whole shelf. This was in my house forever. It's an old vintage like lantern flashlight. Very, very cool. A little tiki there. A little Navajo sand painting I got on the Navajo reservation. Oh, look at that Howlin' Mad Murdoch. Some old school uh, <laughs> children's books. Haunted tacos. This is great. A lot of good stuff in here. Not a lot of room. I'm going to have to sneak my New England stuff in here. I hope my mom doesn't get mad. Check this out. One of only a few tiki's I've ever carved. This one is uh, painted, finished, ready to go. It could be yours today. A handmade tiki carving by yours truly there. Put up in your tiki bar, or put up somewhere. Oceanic Arts is closed, you can't get them there anymore. You do your own, uh, do your own sort of, uh, Adventureland gate action. I got a few signed posters. I signed a couple if you're interested in a, in a signed one. Oh my gosh. Did any of you ever see the Babar movie? Babar, King of the Elephants! Or Taxes, oh, good movie. You got puppets and toy guns and weird dolls and Star Trek stuff. I didn't even notice that creepy clown down there. Look at that, look at that clown. Look at that witch. That's a cool witch right there. Got all kinds of stuff from all over. Cool action figure accessories. Dick Tracy action figures. Got old school 80s Smurfs and Ghostbusters toys. There's a ton of vintage Star Wars in here. I still have tons more that I haven't got in yet. Old school Ninja Turtles. Look at that. There's Pee Wee Herman on a card right there in good condition. Pretty awesome. Got some random land pins. Okay, that's good that we still have a few of those. There's Mr. T right there. I pity the fool that doesn't want a Mr. T. I have no idea where I'm going to stick that bee smoker. All right, somebody come down here. Don't make me look like a fool. You need this. You need this this bee smoker. You having trouble with ornery bees? Come on down to Crazy Random Man's Random Town booth and get yourself something to smoke all the bees you want. You can spray smoke on them. You can put them in there and smoke them, I guess. That'd be weird and unnecessarily... Cruel, probably, but you could do whatever you want with this. They put it on a shelf, put, put stuff in it. I wouldn't recommend drinking out of it. It's a little crusty in there, but you could turn it into a stein. Huh? Come down here so I don't look stupid and don't get in trouble with my mom. Look at, look at how excited I am to see the bee smoker. Wow, that's right, Justin. It's incredible. Allie's favorite here, the little, the five little pumpkin sign. How cute. Put our cool old school license plates in here, I guess. Come on down and get some of those cute little old school boxes of chocolates. Hey, and life is like a box of chocolates. So you need one of these to have life. A big lawn dart. Look at the, that's dangerous. Look at the size of that. Spaghetti of squeeze. I'm just gonna leave this stuff on top of the sticker machine. Look at that, we got a Salem, Massachusetts mug right there. We got the, uh, the pencil case. We got the Minnie Mouse spoon right here. Cute little Christmas snowflake pot holder thing. I'll put that right there. Sorry about that. Wait, there, you see that? You could hear that brain lag live. It's overstimulating being in there. It's exciting. And last but not least, our cool New Hampshire milk bottle. You look up there. What? What is that stuff? I don't even know what that is. There's a old school Pinocchio from Italy. You get the Silver Surfer Jurassic Park helicopter. I'm going to stick that right there. Right there by the giant picture dominoes. Perfect. All right. 
Not too bad. We did okay in here. Hopefully I won't get in too much trouble for messing up my mom's system. You know, Christmas is coming up. You can get a sick old school vintage Disneyland tie. But seriously, a lot of people have been coming in taking pictures with this guy. We really appreciate every single one of you. Uh, not only who comes down here, but checks out our online store, Patreon, and all that kind of stuff. Prices have gone up, like I said, and pay has not, so we really appreciate every single one of you supports the show. We are a very mom and pop organization, believe it or not. So every last thing like this beautiful poster right here that you come and pick up really helps a lot. Helps my mom out too. She uh, comes down here and handles a lot of this stuff, just like Allie ships every order from our house. We've always got lots of crazy projects and things going on and look at all this stuff. I'm getting distracted looking at, look at that, that's sick. A little weird Picasso vase and a fez and a Splash Mountain poster over there. We got the little devil mask over here. And we got a lot of pretty uh, inexpensive stuff, you know. So if you bring the kids, got little things over here for them to browse and be able to get that aren't uh, high ticket items or anything like that. Just sort of little fun stuff. Like, ooh, look at that. We got some, some dwarves there. Okay, and this ah, thing is awesome. Look at this freaking grinder right here for the counter. Old school cast iron. Awesome freaking meat grinder or coffee grinder, whatever it is. That is so cool. Still works. I brought that thing back from the Pacific Northwest, so a lot of the stuff in here is me going around traveling, getting weird stuff. There's animation cells. That's a real cell from Looney Tunes. And you got stuff like this. This was uh, Benny the Cab's original name for Roger Rabbit. And these are uh, studio color charts. My brain is fried. They're used for consistency when they were animating the, the characters in Roger Rabbit. So that's a pretty cool, weird little piece of uh, Disney history. So there's all kinds of stuff in here. All kinds of weird things for you guys. I gotta go jet off and meet my friend in another country and then fly back. So I'm gonna be gone for like about a week and a half, but we're gonna be in and out of here all through November because we got a lot of stuff. And Christmas is coming! Winter's coming too, but Christmas is coming, gang! Get something fun! Come get something fun! Look at this over here. Our neighbor's got a leg lamp. A custom leg lamp. Look at this! That's a major award! That's not no Cracker Jack prize! <laughs> I love that movie. I don't care who knows it. Oh, look at that weird painting. Look at this. A Mary Poppins costume. Ooh, scary. Somebody's grandpa was really scary. Oh, no. I might have to have that gnome. Oh, no. I'm supposed to be selling things, not getting things. Oh, it's dangerous. Dangerous to come in here. There's cool stuff everywhere. Of course, the coolest stuff is at our booth. Don't get me wrong. Look at that 80s coloring book. The hugest strawberry shortcake thing I have ever seen. Look at the size of that. Whoa. And look at this, a giant suit of armor. Whoa, arcade games back here. Ooh, mid-century modern chair, that's rad. It's kind of cool. I remember when I was a kid, this was like the ultimate thing. If someone had this in their house, this or a big screen TV back then, you were like, dude, they're rich. I think there was a guy that went to my parents' church. He used to fix these things and sell them on Brookhurst in Brookhurst and Orange, something like that. Brookhurst and Broadway, maybe? It was like Anaheim Arcade Game, something like that, the name of the business. And I always thought, whoa, wouldn't that be cool to own an arcade game? And now it's like we got better stuff in here than we ever had on the arcades. Crazy. But yes, we've had the pleasure of getting to know most of the vendors in here at the Antique Station. And they, just like any of our other artist friends or small vendor friends... Well, hello there, Mr. Lincoln. I've been squeezed by inflation and everything else. So, when you come down here to visit the Random Land booth, give our neighbors uh, a look over as well. It's really strange, because until we had a booth here, until we were doing this kind of stuff, I always assumed like, oh, you make a mint, it just sits there, people buy stuff. I never understood, oh, is that a bike tank? That's a tank for an old bike, that's cool. Ooh, I don't want that. I never understood just how hard it was to uh, run a little stall like this. Oh, these are awesome. The old Richfield oil stuff. That is so cool. But yeah, something like this, you buy it and it might not even be worth double what you can get it for. And you gotta figure we live in California, so a huge chunk comes out for tax, then 16% to the house here. There's the sheer amount of time that you spend, much less anybody helping you like my mom spends, tagging stuff, pricing stuff, organizing stuff. And you pay rent on your little space in here. And so, you know, you might make 50 cents off an item. It's like that with other stuff. You print t-shirts and people think, oh, you sold 100 t-shirts. You must have just put all that in your pocket. Tax, you got the infrastructure, the online sales thing, shipping. Then of course you gotta order the next batch of t-shirts. So you're not even in the green from selling one batch. You might not be 
in the green for a hundred batches. So there's this phrase that I use all the time. When I was a kid on tour with the band, if we stayed at somebody's house who had like, whoa, dude, you got a van, you've got a house to live in, man, you've got your own tattoo studio, or you've got a recording studio, you work somewhere, cool. it's like, man, you're living the dream. And I remember this one guy who had a recording studio in his house and the whole thing, he was like, dude, I'm just broke at a higher level. He goes, I'm just as broke as you, just on a higher level, because I'm older. I never understood that. I like, broke at a higher level. Now I totally get it. You might be putting food on the table, your family's got shelter, but you're, you're still in debt, you're still paying bills, you're just broke at a higher level. Oh, man. Look at this little fisherman guy here. He's got this little bucket. It says worms, but those don't look like worms. Those look like cigarette butts. What have you been smoking? Is that a worm in his mouth? Gross. Look at that. How cool is that? How old is that? But anyway, yeah, we had a couple of weeks in New England, so that ate away at our October, and we're just here for this couple of days. And then I'm off uh, to foreign shores for only like four or five days and then coming right back. That means we won't actually be home for Halloween, which is really weird. That hasn't happened in a long time. We got the annual pass or the season pass to uh, Scary Farm, like a Scary Farm pass for, for knots this year. We're already packing up our luggage, so tonight is the last chance we have to go meet up with our friends and use that thing. And we fly across the Atlantic, and when we come back, I'm sure everything will already be going full Christmas, except our living room will still look like Halloween. All right, well, I'm just gonna grab a couple things from in here. For one, I've definitely gotta grab that, that garden gnome, so actually, let's go get it. I love old school gnomes, whether they're plastic, does this guy plastic? Yeah, he's some sort of really heavy plastic, or whether they're ceramic or concrete, any, any old school kind of large garden gnome. If I can ever get some land, whether it's somebody else's land or ever get my own land somewhere to do any kind of roadside attraction, I have a plan for them. So someday I might put out the word like, send me all the gnomes. I've just got kind of a, a crazy idea in my head anyway. What was the other thing I was supposed to grab? Oh yeah, oh yeah, my own booth. I saw something my mom must have found that I could really use. There it is, right there. Oh, check out that World Jet Lines thing, that's cool. No, it's this, the bell. Pretty much just about every weekday, and then some if I'm traveling or on a road trip for Patreon, if you're in the Adventurers Club, or up, because you can enter your own amount on there. I do these videos, they're like little vlogs, like 15 minute videos, pretty much every day. Sometimes we skip a few days, and uh, they're called the morning announcements. So you start it by going, good morning everybody, it's, well, imagine it rang right there. The morning announcements and the bell I have at home, been falling apart forever and I've needed a new bell for a while so I'm stealing from myself <laughs> and now I'm gonna go to the front and tell them to so I'm gonna have to grab this this bell and I guess I'll have to pay my mom oh man all right this though this I must pay full retail look at that it's so good all right well I was supposed to drop things off not collect more things but what are you gonna do that's what happens. All right, we got Mr. Gnome stashed under the ugly weird chair. All right, we got the gnome stashed away under the weird ugly chair. I think we can take off now. Yeah, if you're looking for a spot with some sweet vintage swag, here you go, the antique station. Right down here in the orange circle, Old Town Orange. Not gonna lie, I'm looking forward to, after this next trip, being home in Southern California for at least a solid month. It's my favorite thing in the world. Looking around at all the weird stuff in antique stores, I love just getting inspired by old vintage art and packaging and weird products and I don't know, I just like vintage stuff, you know? Maybe it's because I'm getting old. Isn't that right, Dash? So we'll look around a little more thoroughly next time. As you saw earlier, I got a lot of stuff to do at home, not the least of which is I got a lot of carving and painting and stuff. I got a lot of half-finished tiki's and, and carvings and paintings and art pieces. So hopefully things will slow down just enough I can get some of that work done coming up here pretty soon. So only the one tiki in there and I actually knocked down $100 off the price of that tiki. So if any of you are interested, come on down and get it. Yes sir, I do miss living down here. I see my friend Ernie who lives down here for a while. Maybe I should stop in on him real quick. Ah, oh, false alarm. The driveway was empty. Nobody was home. All right, well, it's a sign from the universe. You're done here, son. Go home. All right, gonna head back home real quick. And then head over to Not Scary Farm, because after all, for us anyways, it's our last evening of Halloween. Ooh, look at this. Allie's all dressed up. Hi, Allie. Hi. To go hang out with her friend at Not Scary Farm. We're taking separate cars, because I'm meeting up with some weird goons and ghouls myself. And I've got on the next best thing to a disguise. I'm wearing a different hat. Maybe the clowns won't recognize me over there in Scary Farm. We'll find out. Just waiting in the traffic line. What a fun line to wait in. 
What a fun one! You know, other than the eight hours it takes to park over here. <laughs> really easy access. I forgot my own pro tips. You gotta either come at six or you gotta come at ten. It's one or the other. If you come in between, you're gonna wait a long time in these these parking lines. But I'm almost in. I'm almost in. Oh my gosh, we did it. This is when you park so far away, it's faster to go in through the jungle. It's sort of spooky out here. There's me and my shadow. An old Independence Hall. All, all alone. I feel like this is a dream or something. Just all alone. Just a nice abandoned Soak City over there, huh? Oh, ducks quacking. Let's get out of here. Who knew scary nighttime Independence Hall was scarier than the scary farm? Help me, Benjamin Franklin. Oh boy, it's gonna be busy, busy, busy tonight. Dude, I think I've been out here like six times this year. And probably the last year I was at Not Scary Farm, that many times in one season, was uh, somewhere between 20 and 25 years ago. There was a girl involved I was hoping to bump into that I thought would be here. Anyway, what better year to come multiple times than the 50th anniversary year? It's one for the record books. And it's been a heck of a lot of fun. Not the least because several of my friends have passes to Not Scary Farm this year. A lot of my friends that either don't want to put up with the hassle of having the new Disneyland annual passes or couldn't afford them. And so it's been kind of nice. It's like all the old homies that used to have Disneyland passes are all here at Scary Farm. And I don't know, it's been cool hanging out and feeling that local feeling again. We didn't get to come in this way on media night. We had to come in a different entrance. So I never got to show you these things over here. These rad skull chandeliers or candelabras or both. I don't know. At the entrance, they're rad. Yes. Not scary farm. So scary. Now I'm coming to meet up with my friends Tyler and George. Tyler loves scary farm. But all he ever wants to do at scary farm is go in the back and watch the clowns. He doesn't want to go any mazes or do anything past the first night or two. So a couple weeks ago, we came here with our friend George for his very first time ever at like a haunt or a scary farm thing. And I was like, finally, I'm gonna have an ally, somebody to go in the mazes with and force Tyler to walk around other parts of the farm. But it only took George a couple of hours to decide that he doesn't like haunt mazes and he prefers to go sit in the area with the clowns. He betrayed me. So I know that's where they're gonna be. They're gonna be back there in Carnival checking out the clowns. You look at the monsters in the peak in that's so cool. Wing Lee always is closed. Haunt, Ghost Town Alive. Why is the Wing Lee's laundry never open? Walk carefully, guys. There could be monsters anywhere. Mm -hmm. Bad teachers and ex-wives and everybody's mother-in-law. You never know what could be lurking in the darkness. I love Ghost Town during Scary Park. I love seeing all the monsters on the hunt, on the prowl. Looking for their next victim. Ooh, check this out. I'll show you guys a little Knott's Scary Farm secret. Look at the blacksmith shop right here. You're familiar with that. <laughs> you all remember when famously Knott's Berry Farm finally let me get my own brand here at the blacksmith shop. And there it is, the Random Land R that stands for adventure right there on the door. Well, there's a secret Scary Farm brand at Knott's Scary Farm. I haven't seen this anywhere else. I never knew this. My blacksmith friends never knew this. It was a haunt monster that showed me this little secret last week. Check this out on the front of the blacksmith shop where the doors are normally open all year round. Daytime, nighttime, even at Christmas time. These doors right here are open and there will be a blacksmith inside or, you know, at least some kind of demonstration or things set up to peek out through the door. So most people have never seen this brand that can only be seen when the doors are closed and rarely are the doors closed any other time during Not Scary Farm. Okay, so check this out. This cattle brand right here is incredible. It's not your normal brand on the walls at Not Scary Farm. This cattle brand here is shaped like the head of Frankenstein's monster. Look at the little bolts in the neck right there and the head shape and then backwards. You can just barely make out the letters GC. Those are the initials of a longtime Scary Farm monster who portrayed like a Frankenstein character out here in the ghost town streets even. Named George Case. That's why, as you can see one more time with the flashlight, GC is right on there. It's got that Frankenstein shape. This is a tribute to a fallen haunt monster out here. One of the crew, one of the spooks and ghouls of ghost town. And the cool thing is they put it right here behind the door which are always open when Knott's is open, except during Scary Farm. 
Dude, that is incredible. That is awesome. I haven't seen that anywhere else. I've not seen anyone ever say anything about that. Only the haunt monsters really know Whoa, about it. It's a little tribute, you know, like a little sneaky, cool tribute, a little insider thing. Let's keep it that way. And a not scary farm fact, I did not know a little secret gem. Just like this little secret gem right here. Nice. See my little idea for a disguise so the monsters wouldn't recognize me. Did not work. One of them just told me, I can hear your voice. <laughs> Nothing I can do about it. I was born with this voice. Ah. Uh, That's a scary. <laughs> I love seeing the monsters lurking at the edge of the fog, waiting for unsuspecting victims. I can't get enough of the scary peekins, dude. Probably the best time to see them is during the day, during Knott's Empty Farm. During Haunt Man, come during the day, it's wild. Because it's not wild, there's nobody here, they're all waiting for nightfall. At least during the weekday. See, this was always my favorite part. This is like old school Not Scary Farm when I was growing up. Almost the whole farm was like this in terms of the fog. Now they're kind of restricted, Fog Alley, just to sort of the ghost town area. But uh, it reminds me of the old days. They used to just come sit here on top of the fog machines and hide in the fog and listen to the screams. If I was going to sit out anywhere all night at Not Scary Farm, it would be ghost town to watch the monsters out here. But my friends enjoy the clowns. So to the clowns, we will have to go. Wow, dude, it is packed out here, man. Closer to Halloween than uh, my last several visits. And the Halloween crowns are out in full force out here. I love it, dude. I, I love watching these guys startle people. It's electric out here. It's exciting. Especially since I know I'm not going in any mazes or on any rides. I don't have to get in any lines. To me, that's the benefit of a pass, a season pass anywhere, really. It becomes less about the big ticket attractions and more about getting it to soak it in, you know, really appreciating the atmosphere and the vibe and the characters out on the ghost town streets. I'm having a great time out here so far all alone. But I didn't come here to be alone, did I? I came to find my friends. And like I told you, that means just one thing. It means send in the clowns. out here, but no two bigger clowns than these two clowns. Look at this, it's fake Tyler, I mean spoopy clown Tyler and George. The world's biggest clown fan. You betrayed me, dude. You joined the clown. Look at everybody joining the clowns. Everybody's in the circus now. They all love the clowns. Oh, he can't talk. His mouth is taped shut. Look at all these clowns. There's clowns everywhere. Why do you love the clowns? Oh, they're my friends, man. What? We, they're my friends. You join the circus, you hang out. It's, it's all fun. I can't hear him. What do you say? I can't hear him either. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I know you. I know you. <laughs> Hello. Oh my gosh. Oh no. Oh, so look at that. Look at that. Why are the clowns so mean? I'm not mean. I swear. I just like to eat toes. Eat what? Bones? Bones? Oh, I need toes. Oh, She's toes. Oh, toes. Because of these. Ow. Oh, that's weird. Oh, that's a very scary clown. Oh, boy. See him lurking, slinking, smiling. Ah, wiggling, prowling. George, why won't you watch Troll 2? Is that a real question? It's the best worst movie, dude. Come on. I'm just not interested, dude. One star Sorry. on IMDb. <laughs> is it really a one it star really movie? It really is, dude. You would love it. No the way, most. dude. You no. would love it, I promise. Troll 2! Troll 2! I made Tyler watch it! Oh, Trolls 2! He survived the Trolls 2! Trolls 2! I'll watch Trolls 2! Hey, is Zoe De Chanel in Trolls 2? I probably! Let's watch some Trolls 2! Trolls 2! Electric Boogaloo! Oh. Look at this. We got the demented little teddy bear. Hello! I'm always making them cry. Sorry. This is where I have to come if I want to see my friends. Because until Scary Farm ends, it's all clowns this and clowns that. It's because I took George to the clown motel. I broke him. Are we going back? We got to go back, dude. We got to go back to Area 51. We were there before it was cool. And now we're going to yeah, go back we... long after it's cool. <laughs> Tyler's used to doing that. Oh my gosh. They're all mean. Look at that. The clowns are attacking everyone! Oh, scary. 
scary. <laughs> Look at that guy's disguised himself. He made like a fake red wig so he can blend in with the clowns. Oh, this clown's got electrical gloves on. Look at that. He must be an electrician by day. Whoa! Look at, they love to get close and snuggle. Maybe I have the clowns all wrong. Maybe they're just really friendly. Look, they want to hug and shake hands and love everyone. I was wrong. I was shouting encouraging things. Dude, the clowns out here never stop. All night long, they scream, they squeak, they have different characters, puppets, whoa! Scare equipment. It's my favorite one, the flying monkey clown. Oh, they got different weapons and circus accoutrement, accoutrement! Look at these people here just trying to get some delicious Johnny Rockets. And these filthy clowns won't leave them alone. Unsanitary. Clowns, hello. I have to break away for sanity's sake over to Ghost Town every once in a while and see these demented creatures over here. I like the clowns, I just don't like sitting still for that long. Ooh, woodland creatures, look at all the nature we're seeing. Spooky. Something about it. Something about the old classic Ghost Town fog. Can't get enough of at Halloween. <laughs> Scary Bride was here. Just goes to show ya. There's no way out at Scary Farm. No way out. And no way out of having to go back with my friends to the clown area. I like the clowns. They're funny. I just like the ghost town fog, you know? Clowns need some fog. Poor dead wood dick. He can't get no rest in ghost town on these here nights. It's probably actually out here. Wandering the streets of Ghost Town. Scary. Oh. Reaping a harvest, a spooky harvest. All right, I'll head back over there. I just enjoy the Ghost Town creatures so much. Like a little dream. One day, I'd like to be a monster on the Ghost Town streets just once. Would be awesome. I don't think they hire people for just one day, though. I think I uh, heard they need a bigger commitment than that. That's what the DL is down at the station. The, the word on the streets. Johnny? <laughs> Ooh. It's Creature of the Night Man. Like that Kiss album. The Creatures of the Night. Yeah, clowns! Well, you and I get startled from time to time. Anyway, I know it's been kind of a weird adventure, kind of a hodgepodge of crazy stuff today. I'd love to go and look at more of Scary Farm with you, but so where my friends want to sit all night with the clowns. Look, they haven't even moved. They just watch the clowns and watch the clowns all night. Oh no! Whoa! Oh, Where's the dancing clown? Well, oh! Why'd you put that much burrito in your mouth? Whoa! Hey, hey! You remember those? Uh, don't bother don't me. Don't tie with your mouth full. Hey. Don't tie with your mouth hey. full. To stop him, George. Do you remember those? Don't bother him eating. Yeah, it's not funny. Do you remember those commercials from Carl's Jr.? How funny. You know those ones that said, don't bother me, I'm eating? I don't remember those. I remember if it doesn't get all over the place, it doesn't, it doesn't belong, belong in your, your face. face. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Don't bother me, I'm eating. Look it up. It's real. Don't bother me. Oh, I'm real like your girlfriend that lives in another town? Ha! <laughs> but, whoa. Whoa. Hey. What? I haven't heard anybody scream like that since your last victim, somebody's Tyler. Somebody's eating a burrito. Uh-huh. Whoa, 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 whoa. 
But if somebody's eating a burrito, uh, gotta let him be. How you doing, George? Troll two, buddy. Come on. Trolls two. Troll two or Night Killer? It's a good one. <laughs> How'd you like Night Killer? Oh, Night Killer was awesome. We gotta talk about that on the Patreon podcast. Yeah, okay, sign up. The link will be in the description. Smash it. Smash, Smash the, link. the link. What, George? I don't think. The- Mike, why'd you do that? He threw a burrito at you. Do you remember what happened when someone threw a burrito at Jack Black? Just, run, run for your life. Someone just threw that at There was a man on the bridge. He hit me with a burrito. I didn't see him, but someone threw it at you. That's messed up. I'll try to find him for you. He's dead. Kick his dog off He's a bridge. Dead. Dog off the bridge. Yeah, like, like Anchorman. Anchorman. Yeah. <laughs> he threw a burrito no, at I like you. Bogey. I wouldn't kick him off. Uh, well, not, not his literal dog. His metaphorical dog. His metaphorical. It's been fun this Halloween season. Universal, Oogie Boogie Bash, Not Scary Farm, Haunted Overload, Going to Salem, Doing all kinds of random land frights, things. We'll have even more crazy Halloween adventures next year, I'm sure. Since we probably aren't going to go back to New England, but you never know. We're going to have one, just one more. Halloween adventure this year. That'll be coming up to you soon. First, I gotta get out of here, go home, sleep well, go to the airport, and head to another place. Thank you guys for watching on this random day where I had to do about 18 different things. Hope you enjoyed the show and tell. Thank you to those of you who've gone down to check out the Antique Station booth. And for those of you who've gone to check out our Patreon or our online store or anything like that, we really appreciate you and we really appreciate you watching all these videos that have come out this month. There's a whole bunch. A lot of behind the scenes haunt stuff too, which is really crazy. I forgot all about the Random Land on Location videos. Anyway, George and Tyler aren't gonna budge. So I think for now we've done all that we can do here at Scary Farm. I'm gonna catch up with you guys later. For now, you've done your duty. You can go home and sleep well.